new life. It's spring. Faith is in the air. Spring is in the air. They say faith is in the air. We're still talking about unpacking faith or faith unpacked today. We're going to talk about faith bites. You know what that means? It doesn't really bite. It means like faith bites, you know, like little chicken bites, like little chicken pops, like little things, you know. Faith bites in little doses. Okay, so we're going to drip feed you this morning with a bit of faith, so get your veins ready. You know, when the nurse looks for that vein to pop in that needle, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to pop in the Holy Spirit into that vein, and we're going to get the Holy Spirit to download some stuff into your veins, into your body, into your soul, into your spirit. So then when we walk out of here, you are full, you are filled up with a meal from the Word of God. Amen. How's that? Jesus said that He feeds only on the will of God. And so we need to feed on the Word of God. We need to continue to be full with the Word and overflowing with it. So faith bites. You'll see there that there's an arrow that goes in the background there. It's a fiery and watery arrow. So it's got quenched by the water, the fiery arrow. Who shoots the fiery arrows? The enemy. We are under attack all the time. He shoots them all the time. Satan is not happy that you're saved. Let's put it that way. Satan is not happy that you look like God. You're created in the image of God, amen? Every human being that walks upon the earth is created in the image of God. Whether they're serving God or not, they're created in that image, and Satan does not like that image, and Satan will want to distort that image. He wants to come against you, and he wants you to look like him. Amen? Come on. When Satan distorts the image of God, people begin to look like Satan and not like God. Amen? Come on, you see it in manifestation. Have you seen not on TikTok? Have you, how many of you are on TikTok? I'm not even on TikTok anymore. I used to be on TikTok, but I, I went off. I stay sort of, I don't have enough time to go onto all the social media platforms, you know. There's too many of them. But the thing is, even on TikTok, you get now the demon pronouns. It's not they, them, and there anymore. It's now them, demon, and demons. Young people are doing stuff like that. You get demon doll pronoun. People identify as demon doll now or demon. Now, people are shocked by these things, but that is because they're manifesting like their father. You see, if your father is not in heaven, your father is in hell. Amen. You see, at the end of the day, if you're not serving God, you're, not, you, you're serving Satan. Whether it be in a small measure or a big measure, Pastor George has said this over the years, if you're not a Christian, you're a Satanist. Come on, there's only black or white. There's no gray areas. There's only two roads. There's a wide road and a narrow road. You see, sometimes we make provision for gray roads, little roads, side roads, side paths. There's no shortcut over the mountain to the kingdom of God. I mean, there's no, there's no formula to the kingdom of God. There's nothing that you can say, oh, I've got the formula now. I've got the way to sit in, in, the, in this position or that position, and that's going to open this chakra and that chakra, and then I'm going to receive this power and that power. Amen. Watch out what you do with your yoga activities. Amen. Those are positions of spirituality. How many of you know that? Be careful. The things you get involved in. And there's many things, and there's many things that are disguised and sugar-coated by the enemy. The enemy is not going to give you something that looks ugly and tastes bad. Right. Say that again. The enemy doesn't give you something that looks ugly and tastes bad. He doesn't come as a horned creature with a fork in his hand. I mean, no, nobody's going to say, yes, come into my house when someone rocks up at your house and he looks like ugly and he's got horns and he's got a fork and he's got fire coming out of his tail. Amen. And, oh, open the door. And you go, oh, lovely, come in for some tea. <laughs> Who does that? Come on. You just see someone that looks dodgy and you're looking out the window. Yeah. <laughs> that guy looks dodgy. I'm sure he's going to break in somewhere now. <laughs> come on, that's true. All of you, I know I'm speaking to many South Africans now. You keep the locks locked. You keep the windows locked. You sleep with everything closed. Even the air vents must be closed with, with nets and, and locks and stuff so people can't break in through the air vents. And so We in South Africa, for goodness sake, we don't sleep with open doors, amen? Only the church is the open door, amen, not your house. Come on. But the enemy... Doesn't come like that. He doesn't come in an ugly thing. He comes with a temptation. He comes looking like this orange. If you throw me that orange, Liesl, hopefully I can catch. Okay. Who can <laughs> I'll aim at the back there. I see some guys that are ready to catch. You see, he comes like this, looking beautiful on the outside. But inside it's a worm. Inside it's fraught. Inside, have you bitten into a fruit before and there's a worm's tail still going? Huh? That's what the enemy does. So think about the things that you've said yes to. Think about the things that you've fallen prey to. Think about the arrows that the enemy is shooting at you. Think about the things that you're allowing into your life. It looks good on the outside, but on the inside it is rotten. On the inside it is destructive. On the inside it is, is something small that could have crept into your life somewhere. Keep those doors closed. Amen. There's it in the slips. 
I knew I could trust Dave to catch it. Dave like for, <laughs> Amen. Should have thrown it a little bit to my right. <laughs> Amen. But let's talk about faith this morning because I want to give you some vitamins for the soul. I want to give you some bites that's going to fill you. The Lord spoke to me about four different things of faith. This is not the whole package. Last week we spoke about the Hebrew and the Greek and all this stuff and the foundational stuff of faith. But this week we're going to take some bites which is needed for you because we need to use the word like that. When we see there's a deficiency in the body of Christ, we need to feed it with the word of God so that people can get strong on the word. Amen? There's some deficiencies in, the, in all of us all the time, but we need that vitamins, you need that veggies, you need those fruits, you need the meat, you need all this stuff, amen, especially the meat. Faith, Hebrews 11 verse 1 to 3, we're going to our definition of faith again to start off every week. Now faith is the, of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders or the ancestors obtained a good testimony, by faith we understand that the world's were framed by the Word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. God didn't need something to make something. God is God. God is the God of the impossible. This, this definition of faith is so powerful because it's the substance of the things you hope for in Christ. It's faith accesses the things you hope for. What are the things you're hoping for? And these are not talking about your own will. It's not talking about your own desires. It's talking about desiring the things of God. It's talking about having hope in the things of God. Do you hope for salvation? Do you hope for healing? Do you hope for deliverance? Do you hope for prosperity? Do you hope for peace in your life? Do you hope for all of these things? If you hope for them, faith is the thing that accesses those things and pulls it towards you. Amen. When your faith is not in, in love, your faith is not in peace, your faith is not in joy, your faith is in Jesus because He's the one that purchased all these things for you. He's the one that paid the price so that you can have peace. He's the one that paid the price so that you can have an abundant life. Jesus says it in the Bible. John 10, 10 says, The enemy comes to steal, kill, and to destroy, but I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. That abundant life, you can access it by faith because the things that you hope for will then come into your life because those things that says in the next part, for the evidence of the things not seen. Those things are not seen yet. They're not manifested yet. They haven't come into your life yet, but you draw them by faith out of the spiritual realm into the physical realm. That's how the power of prayer works, amen. The prayers are not for the people around you to hear how well you can pray. Sometimes we're worried about what people think around us. I sometimes can say to the person, don't worry about that. One word can be a more powerful prayer than a person that just quoted 20 scriptures. Do you know that? Depending on where their faith was when they prayed it. You see, at the end of the day, God's looking for hearts where the motives are pure, hearts where the motives are, are, are set on Jesus, hearts where the, we set on the Word of God. It, it doesn't mean that someone is quoting the Scriptures, that they're actually believing the Scriptures. You see, there's a difference in that. Even the, even the demons believe and they shudder, they shake, they quiver, amen? But we need to be trusting in God and having the faith in God that what the Scripture says, we believe in the God that wrote the Scriptures and not just the Scriptures as a tool to say, I know all the Scriptures. Yeah. Amen. Do we believe in the God of the Scriptures? That is faith. Let us move on this morning. So your first, first bite this morning. <laughs> faith that saves. Isn't that true? How many of you know we have a faith that saves? The fruit of our faith begins to go over into salvation. So this is what Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 10 says. God saved you by grace when you believed. This is a New Living Translation. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it, for we are God's masterpiece. I love that. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. Isn't that powerful? You've been saved by grace, or by this grace, when you believed. By grace, through faith. Now let's talk about the, let's take the scripture and let's unpack it a little bit for faith bites this morning so that you can fill up. By grace is God's part. Only God can bring grace into your life. You cannot manufacture grace. You cannot make grace. Grace is unmerited favor. It means you did nothing to deserve it. God looks at you, a sinner, and he says, I still want to save you, devil, even though you're a naughty boy. 
Check them out. Nothing. Devil looks naughtier in that orange for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, it's so funny this morning when he walked in. I said, Devil, do you look like the orange man? So, so Manny says, No, you look like the Nazi man. Don't be an arky. No? Amen. <laughs> but, Devil, do you look naughty this morning? I don't know for some reason that orange brings it out in you. <laughs> His wife says, Yes, he's a naughty boy. <laughs> Amen. So, the grace part is God's part. That is what we cannot do. God has to bring unmerited favor. God saved us while we were sinners, not when we were saints, not when you were a goody two-shoes, not when you were great, not when you were an example to anyone. When you were still far and lost and unsaved, God said, I want to save you, Shane, when you had all those bad things in your life, all the bad thoughts, all the bad friends, all the bad influences, all the stuff you used to do. God said, there, you're a candidate for my grace. Amen. You're a candidate for God's grace. Every person that you meet. That is why I cannot let people go when they need Jesus. You can't just walk past people and say they don't need grace. Everybody needs grace. And the only way that they can access this grace is your part through faith. You can only access grace by faith. You must put your faith. And that's where the gospel is the full gospel. Because many times people preach only to the first part. That's where many preachers on YouTube, you can go check it out, had to repent to say, I've been preaching a half a gospel. I've been preaching a false gospel. Because if you only stop by grace and you don't talk about faith, then there's no part that man plays in this where they have to put their faith in the finished work of the cross of what Jesus has done. You have to repent. Je moet pakir. Nice Afrikaans word, eh? Turn around, turn away from the sin. Turn to, we talk about this every Sunday. Turn away from the sin, turn towards God. That's what you have to do, turn towards the cross. And when you find the cross, when you come to the cross, you realize the cross is a place of death. It's a place where Christ died for you, but it's a place where your fleshly nature also has to die. Amen. For you to enter into the spiritual nature, which was the resurrection of Christ. Amen. Through the resurrection, you have life eternal in you now. We cannot preach the gospel without the resurrection. Amen? So you have to access this grace by faith. This is not works that you can boast in it. Nobody can say, I saved myself. <laughs> I've been in church 20 years. I got saved. No, it's not the church that saved you. It's Jesus that saved you. It's the Word of God. It's the truth of the Word. It's what Christ has done for you. That's why people can get saved in their living rooms. They can get saved on the street. They can get saved in the club. They can get saved while they're worshiping Satan. You know, I know this is true because just recently a young man got saved that was leading up the, heading up the Satanic Church in South Africa. You know how he got saved? He got saved when he was going to do a ritual to get more powers from Satan. And as soon as he'd started that ritual, Jesus manifested in a vision to him. My God, He's a God of the impossible. His name is You can go check Him on YouTube. His testimony is there right now. Some people are saying, well, this is fake and this is that and this is that. I don't know. I can't question if it's fake or not. But all I know is He had an encounter with God and He was crying about it. And He said, I'm no longer a Satanist. I'm now a Christian. The fruit's there already. He's already started speaking. He already confessed what happened in his heart with his mouth. Amen. He already confessed Christ and he had an encounter with God. And when you have an encounter with God like this, this is when you get saved. Amen. When the Holy Spirit comes and he says, I want that Satanist that's at the top of the ranks to come into my kingdom. That is the reason why none of us can walk past people and just say, well, well, to hell with them. We cannot ignore people that are still unsaved. Our job on this earth is to get people saved. I mean, we have to do it. This is the reason. Let's look at the reason for being saved. To do the good things. It says it in that scripture. The good things Father God prepared for you long in advance. The good works according to His plan. That's your purpose upon this earth. To do the good things. The good fruit that you produce. The things that people can take hold of and say, I can see that this is a true Christian. I want what they have. When lost has someone said they want what you have? When lost has someone desired the peace that you have, the joy that you have, the patience that you have, <laughs> the kindness that you have, I mean, the self-control that you have? Woo. We don't practice self-control enough. You know the reason why we don't practice self-control? Because we think it's self-control, but it's spirit-controlled. How do I know this? Because in Galatians 5... 22, it says that the gifts of the, or the fruit of the Spirit, the last one is self-control. So it's a fruit of the Spirit. It's not a fruit of self. 
So the more you try to self-educate, self-improve, self this, self that, you're going to only find self. Amen. And God needs to come into that place.